Hey, baseball fans, welcome back to Tits and Streams, your go-to channel for daily baseball predictions. I'm Koken, and I'm here to give you the inside scoop on today's top matchups. Before we dive into today's picks, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss out on our latest predictions. If you enjoy our content, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends who love baseball and sports betting. Our channel relies entirely on your support. We don't have any sponsors, so every like, share, and comment helps us keep going. If you'd like to support us even more, consider donating by pressing the thanks button under this video. We love hearing from you. Drop a comment below. Your feedback makes our channel better. All right, let's get into today's predictions. Today we have predictions for four MLB games. The first prediction for today is for a game between the Cincinnati Reds and St. Louis Cardinals. In this matchup between the Cincinnati Reds and the St. Louis Cardinals, the Cardinals are sending Sonny Gray to the mound, while the Reds are countering with Jacob Junis as their starting pitcher. The Reds' offense hit a rough patch on Wednesday, as they couldn't muster enough runs despite solid pitching, ultimately losing 2-1. Brandon Williamson took the mound for Cincinnati, delivering five innings of three-hit, one-run ball. Santiago Espinal managed a hit and drove in the team's lone run. Offensively, the Reds are averaging 4.42 runs per game, while allowing 4.27 runs. Their offense sits mid-pack, ranked 15th in the league, and their pitching is a bit stronger at 13th. Ellie De La Cruz has been a bright spot, racking up 23 home runs and driving in 65 RBIs this season. On the flip side, the Cardinals' pitching was lights out on Wednesday, propelling them to victory. Lance Lynn put in a solid shift, going five innings while giving up five hits and one run. St. Louis is averaging 4.11 runs per game, while their pitching staff has been giving up 4.57 runs. Offensively, they rank 24th, while their pitching ranks 20th in the league. Alec Burleson has been a key contributor with 21 home runs and 73 RBIs so far this season. Sonny Gray, who has been shaky at times, will be tasked with the start today, holding a 12-9 record and a 3.84 ERA. The Cardinals this season have been like the Atlanta Hawks from a few NBA seasons ago, always flirting with 500 but never really breaking through. As the wildcard race in the National League heats up, St. Louis finds itself seven games back and time is running out fast. Even with a capable lineup, the Cardinals are facing tough competition from the Braves and the Mets, two teams that are playing excellent baseball. Barring a meltdown from one of these teams, the road to the playoffs looks grim for the Cardinals. If they want to make a serious push, it has to start now, and Gray will be feeling the heat. While Gray has shown glimpses of quality at home, he has struggled mightily against Cincinnati. Over multiple starts against his former team this season, he surrendered 12 runs on 12 hits in just 9.2 innings of work. In his career against the Reds, Gray holds a 0-3 record with a 5.82 ERA. His last outing against them saw the Cardinals fall 6-1 at Great American Ballpark. On the other hand, the Reds are on a tear, winning three straight and seven of their last nine. When Cincinnati gets on a roll, you've got to back them. Right now, they're in one of those streaks where they look unbeatable, and this feels like the right time to ride the wave, especially with Gray's recent woes against them. The Reds' bullpen hasn't been sharp lately, but neither has St. Louis's. Given the Reds' current form and the Cardinals' inconsistency, I see value in backing Cincinnati on the money line. Welcome to BetUS, Sportsbook and Casino, your ultimate hub for secure and thrilling sports betting and casino gaming. BetUS is one of the oldest and most reliable online sportsbooks in the U.S., serving millions of clients all over the globe each month. BetUS, trusted for over 30 years, offers huge welcome bonuses, countless betting options, and many deposit and payout methods. Depositing funds is a breeze and safe, with a minimum deposit of just $10. Payouts are fast and hassle-free, beginning at only $50. Choose from various payout options like MoneyGram, Couriered Check, Cryptocurrency, or BankWire. Signing up is quick and easy. For signing up, you can use the link in the description and enjoy a generous 125% welcome bonus of up to $3,000. By signing up using the link in the description, you'll also support us as we earn a small commission from your registration at BetUS. Thank you for supporting us. Join now and start winning. The second prediction for today is for a game between the Miami Marlins and Washington Nationals. The Washington Nationals are gearing up to face the Miami Marlins, with Mitchell Parker taking the hill for the Nats and Darren Mackin set to pitch for Miami. While Parker hasn't been flawless this season, he's had moments of real brilliance, especially in terms of his strikeouts. Across his last two starts, Parker racked up 13 punchouts, though he did surrender four runs in both outings. Back on home turf, where he's been sharper, this matchup could be just what he needs to shine. 
On the other side, Mackin's performances have been a mixed bag. He's managed to hold things steady, working around five innings in recent starts, but he's also allowed seven runs, five of those earned, over his last eight-plus innings of work. The Marlins have certainly seen worse arms on the mound this year, but Mackin's habit of giving up three or four runs per start has repeatedly put Miami in a hole too deep to climb out of. The Nationals, currently sporting a 65-80 record and sitting fourth in the National League East, have had their share of offensive struggles this season. However, they've been resilient after wins, with a 32-32 record against the run line in those games. They've also covered the run line in their last game and 12 of their previous 19. The Marlins, meanwhile, are stuck in fifth place in the NL East with a 54-92 record. Their offense has been underwhelming, to say the least. Despite their struggles, the Marlins hold a 68-78 record against the run line, and they've actually performed a bit better on the road with a 36-35 mark. After a loss, though, their numbers dip significantly, covering the run line only 43 out of 91 times. Still, they've managed to cover in 10 of their last 17 games, making them a tricky, if inconsistent, opponent. A crucial element in this game is Miami's well-known trouble with left-handed pitching. The Marlins have been one of the worst teams in baseball when facing lefties, posting a miserable 10-40 record against left-handed starters. This stat alone spells trouble for them against Parker, who is a lefty and pitching at home. Miami has dropped four of its last six games and continues to struggle on the mound, ranking 28th in both ERA and WHIP, while sitting dead last in quality starts. Washington, though not an offensive juggernaut, holds the 14th best team batting average in the league, which should be enough to exploit Miami's weak pitching. While the Nats aren't known for their power, ranking 23rd in both slugging and runs scored, their steady offense plays well against the Marlins' weaknesses. The Nationals have also been solid within the division. While Miami has struggled, going 16-29 against NL East foes. Washington has thoroughly dominated the season series against Miami, owning an 8-1 record against them. Taking all these factors into account, I'm leaning toward Washington in this one. Their offense has been more dependable, and with Miami's continued struggles against left-handed pitching, the Nationals are in a great position to pick up another win. Expect Parker to settle in and guide Washington to a victory. The third prediction for today is for a game between the Tampa Bay Rays and Cleveland Guardians. As we gear up for the Rays and Guardians showdown on September 12, 2024, at Progressive Field, we see two teams with contrasting seasons, each looking to maximize their strengths in this critical late-season clash. The Rays, currently holding a 71-75 record, have had their playoff chances dwindle, but they remain a dangerous team capable of shaking things up. Despite trading away key players at the deadline, Tampa Bay continues to compete fiercely, and this game could be their opportunity to disrupt Cleveland's momentum. The Guardians, meanwhile, have been dominant in the American League Central, boasting an 84-62 record. They've been a model of consistency all season, coming into this matchup riding a solid streak of seven wins in their last ten games. Their success has been driven by a balanced offensive attack and a bullpen that's been lights out in tight situations. For Tampa Bay, Ryan Pepiot will take the mound. He's been one of their most dependable starters, posting a 3.66 ERA with 118 strikeouts on the season. Pepiot's ability to keep the ball down and limit hard contact has been crucial, especially against a Cleveland lineup that can exploit mistakes. In his last five starts, Pepiot has allowed two or fewer earned runs in four of them, proving he's in great form heading into this game. Pepiot's challenge will be to quiet a Guardians offense anchored by the ever-dangerous Jose Ramirez. Ramirez has been on a hot streak, consistently delivering big hits and driving in runs, though the rest of the lineup has shown some inconsistency. That said, Cleveland has fared better against right-handed pitchers recently, batting 252 over the past 10 games, which could pose a problem if they manage to get to Pepiot early. On the Cleveland side, Gavin Williams will be looking to bounce back from a rough stretch. With a 5.25 ERA, Williams has struggled with both control and giving up hard contact. His last start was particularly rough, as he lasted just two-thirds of an inning against the Dodgers, giving up five earned runs. He'll need to regain his composure quickly, as Tampa Bay's lineup, though not overpowering, has a knack for capitalizing on mistakes. Tampa Bay's offense has been inconsistent, but Yandy Diaz and Jonathan Aranda provide some stability. Despite hitting only two 225 against right-handed pitchers over the last 10 games, they could find success against Williams, who has shown vulnerability to big innings. One of the deciding factors in this game will likely be the bullpens, both teams feature elite relief pitching, with Tampa Bay's bullpen ranking third and Cleveland's fifth in the league. If this game stays close, both teams will be confident in their ability to shut things down late. However, given Williams' recent struggles, Cleveland may have to lean on their bullpen earlier than planned, which could put added pressure on their relievers. 
Historically, Tampa Bay has thrived in these situations. They've posted an impressive 43-18 record in Thursday games, often relying on their pitching depth to grind out wins. With PPO in strong form and Tampa Bay's ability to adapt in close games, the Rays could hold the edge in what looks to be a low-scoring affair. Given the struggles of Gavin Williams and the steadiness of PPO, my pick is to back Tampa Bay on the money line. And with both teams' offenses not firing on all cylinders, combined with their strong bullpens, I expect the total run line to stay under 8. This won't be a slugfest, it'll be a battle of strategy and execution. The fourth prediction for today is for a game between the Milwaukee Brewers and San Francisco Giants. In this upcoming showdown between the San Francisco Giants and the Milwaukee Brewers, we're looking at an interesting pitching matchup that could set the tone for the game. The Giants will rely on Hayden Birdsong, while the Brewers send Frankie Montes to the mound. The Brewers come into this game with an 83-62 record, but their offense has been inconsistent. They've managed just six runs in their last three games and have struggled to produce, scoring three or fewer runs in five of their last six outings. As a result, Milwaukee has dropped five of those six contests when scoring three or fewer runs. Despite these struggles, William Contreras has been a bright spot with 155 hits and 84 RBIs, while Willie Adams and Bryce Terang have contributed a combined 265 hits and 154 RBIs. On the flip side, the San Francisco Giants hold a 72-74 record and are set to face a tough stretch of games against the Padres, Orioles, Royals, Diamondbacks, and Cardinals. The Giants' offense, however, has shown more life recently, putting up 22 runs in their last three games and scoring four or more runs in six of their last nine. They've also won three straight when they've crossed that four-run threshold. Matt Chapman leads the team with 134 hits and 73 RBIs, while Heliot Ramos and Michael Conforto have combined for 202 hits and 123 RBIs. Looking closer at the pitchers, Montes has been shaky. Despite a 3.92 ERA in his last seven starts, he's been inconsistent, allowing three or more runs in six of those outings. In his most recent game, he struck out 10 batters, but couldn't avoid the loss as the Brewers fell 3-2 to the Rockies. His road performances have been particularly troublesome, allowing four runs in back-to-back -back games over six innings. His control issues, combined with inconsistent strikeout numbers, have raised questions since his acquisition by the Brewers. On the other side, Birdsong is still trying to establish himself at the major league level. With a 5.19 ERA in 52 innings this season, his command has been a concern, issuing at least four walks in each of his last three starts. Despite flashes of potential, Birdsong has struggled to contain opposing lineups, giving up five or more runs in three of his last six outings, along with six home runs. Offensively, these two teams are headed in different directions. Milwaukee has been slightly better against right-handed pitching, but San Francisco's bats have been struggling, hitting just 207 recently. That said, Montes' inconsistency might give the Giants an opening to do some damage. In conclusion, this matchup has the makings of a high-scoring game, with both pitchers having trouble finding consistency, especially with their control. While the Brewers have hit a rough patch, I believe they'll turn things around, especially considering they're in the hunt for the National League Central title. Milwaukee is the more complete team, and with San Francisco essentially out of the playoff race and Birdsong struggling, I'm backing the Brewers to cover the run line and take care of business.